Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready to rock? Welcome back to Offstage with DWP. Special one today. Got good friends, Ben and Danny of Asking Alexandria. What's up, brothers? What's Woo! going on? How, how, how are you doing, Mr. Mr. Warsnop? I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing you pretty know, good. Well, you know I, I, I say that. I'm incredibly stressed. I've been fighting with UPS all morning because they've They've gotten into this new habit of losing all my packages. That's not a new habit. So for me, first, it is. For, it, hey, it used to fellas, be. first question: Are you like how how much do you miss each other, or are you like psyched that you're not ne next to each other? I hate Danny, but don't tell him. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big secret, but we we loathe each other. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm people for some reason a group chat's just started going off on my phone, so I'm swiping up the alerts. So I can see your I eyes. Th I thought you were flicking me. I don't yeah, like this too. man. I don't like him. No, I've, that's is that the new I like, sawed off. As of as of yesterday, yeah. As of as of yesterday, for some reason, uh, I ended up in a group chat with the singers of The Word Alive, Escape the Fate, and Falling in Reverse, and I don't know why. We're all just well. I say we're all. I'm working doing this and they're just sending memes right yeah ronnie's good at that by the way um yeah we, we are with asking alexandra you are off stage with dwp i'd like to get into it maybe go a little chronologically here uh as i was doing some research over the weekend i'll start with, I'll, with for the lack of sounding cheesy who is asking who is alexandria and what the fuck is she asking um you know, I can't even. Uh, how many uh, different stories have we come up with over the years, Danny? Hun no, no exaggeration, hundreds. Hundreds. I remember the, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I, look, I Jane's addiction. There this. is a there is a Jane. Is there an is there an Alexandria? There's no Alexandria. There is no Alexandria, which means really there's no question. There's no who band. Are who are who, we? Other than who, who is are it? we? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> All right, so good I? answer. Uh, formed in 2006. <laughs> I re is this true in Dubai? Yeah, yeah. I All formed. Right. I lived in Dubai as a. I grew up in Dubai. So that's a first that a, a rock band a, a, in its in its tradition has been formed in Dubai. Am I wrong in that? I mean, there there's probably there, other bands there. There are definitely other bands out there. That was that was a pretty vibrant uh, local scene. Um, and bands used to go to Dubai quite a lot too. I've seen so many bands in Dubai from Machine Head through to Deep Purple and Aerosmith. So it, it has a pretty vibrant uh, rock scene. But um, yeah, that is where I initially started the band uh, Asking Alexandria. But when I moved back to the UK, the rendition that everyone knows and tolerates is that's when we formed. And uh, what was that, Daniel? Like 2008? No, that was 2007. We moved to the United. It, it was two thousand seven, um, because I had done a very, 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 very small amount of college. A very small uh, amount of college. And a semester to get a semester in. Uh, yeah, and then Be Benjamin was emailing me on the internet. I didn't know who he was. He was just a strange man, tech, uh, emailing me, asking me to to drop out of college and move across the country to live with him. So naturally, that's what I did. All right, Ben, I have to ask you, sidebar, <laughs> Dubai and England. Are you a tennis fan? Am I a tennis fan? Uh, I did used to play tennis, but I wasn't very good at it. Uh, the, look at these arms. Look at these. They're not very powerful arms, so I gave up tennis to play badminton. The racket's much smaller. <laughs> I, I say that because as a tennis junkie, Dubai has like six tennis tournaments and, of course, England, which is the, yeah. the Super Bowl of, of, of Wimbledon. Um, it's thought I actually a shot saw dark. a lot of my favorite bands in Dubai at the tennis stadium. Like I saw Deep Purple there, Scorpions there. They they all go and play at the tennis stadium over there. Yeah, right on. For some reason, yeah, Dubai has like a crazy amount of tennis tournaments. So fun fact for everybody: Asking Alexandria formed in Dubai, moved in 2007 back to England. Um, Danny, I'd like to get into December 2012. You blew out your vocal oh, wow. cord then. You blew out your vocal yeah. cord. You missed a New York gig, which is a big deal. Uh, I think I see Stars and Attila filled in for you that night. Um, it was a, it was a, it was a few. There were a few different bands. Everyone kind of, everyone chipped in. Um, 
to, to help cover me. And I think that was, it was like the night or, it was a night or two before that, that it actually happened. And I was, I remember I was on stage and I went for something and I just felt a pop. And it was like, I, I could hear it. I don't know if anyone else did. Probably not yeah. because of the music and the in ears. But I, I heard it like, a, it, was, it was like, a, it, it was just like, a, like a, a very loud bang, like within my head region. And like the note I was at instantly just like dropped an octave. And then I just got this massive pain through my, uh, through my neck. And I, just, I knew there was something wrong. Ben, and, do you remember that? Uh, yeah, and I remember thinking, what a coincidence. He's been a pain in my neck for years. So, <laughs> Well, that does – uh, uh, by the way, Dan, is Danny a walker and talker? Yeah. Yes, he yeah. is. Look at him. I'm getting <laughs> dizzy, dude. I'm getting motion sickness. <laughs> Should I, do you want me to sit down? Am I, am I, that <laughs> would be brilliant, yes. Okay, hold up. Let me, let me move this car. I know. I feel like I'm on <laughs> a love boat or something. <laughs> I, don't even, I, don't even, I don't even realize. I pace all day long. I get it. No, I'm 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 a good walker and talker too. Until it's until it's time to go to stage, and then he's like, "Oh, but I just sat down." Oh, shin splints. I ask about 2012 because you know, shortly after you kind well, not shortly after. Um, I, I'm jumping around. You you took a break from the band, and yeah, I, I think it became. It, it, and, and excuse me if I'm going to go therapist for a moment and correct me if I'm wrong. It feels like you guys were married very young and Danny, you felt like I, this marriage, I got married young. I need to do something. I need to see something else no, before I come back. It, it wasn't, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was, there was, I, I, so there were a lot of factors that led to this and, and played into it, but there was a, a massive, tremendous amount of conflict within our within our camp and there was a lot of a, a lot of pressure on us but it was it was pressure being put on us that didn't need to be there and there were people telling us like hey if you if you take basically if you take a break if you don't go on tour if you take time off from touring for whatever it is going on in your personal life like your career is done you're not you're, you're gonna be you're gonna disappear so they we were, we were being controlled and being pushed and anything that anybody wanted to do that wasn't grind asking Alexandria, that was seen as a threat. And it was, it was there and kind of attacked. So when, when I started branching out and being like, I'd like to do some solo songs, they're different to this. I'd like to, because this was before Harlot was Harlot. It was initially just a solo record. Um, but it, it got to a point where it was just, there was just so much conflict and it just, it wasn't, it wasn't a positive environment to, environment to be in. We we ended up just really sad. We were sad, and we we started resenting each other. And it's only in hindsight that, that I and we see that it's like we weren't actually mad at each other at all. We were mad at the situation, and we were we were just buckling under the pressure we were under, and we didn't know how to handle it or where to direct that frustration. So, because we were just stuck with each other, that's where it went. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. So in 2017, Ben or, or Danny, if I, I don't know who wanted who back first, but was it really pretty simple or was it? No, we, were, we, we were tricked into seeing each other. Yeah. I, was in Los, I was in Los Angeles. I think I was, I was auditioning for something. Ben was in, uh, I was auditioning for a Warner Brothers movie. Ben was filming pickup stuff for American Satan, the movie he was doing. Uh, we hadn't spoken in like a year. Yeah, I've been, been and here. then uh, we were both tricked into being at the same house, and, and then we had a, a <laughs> we had a pizza, <laughs> and the rest is history. We did. We had a, well, it must have been a really we had good a pizza. pizza. I had a handle of I had a handle of Jameson, and I fell asleep on Ben's lap. Yeah, <laughs> and now we're in twenty twenty. Here we are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was that is that simple? Like, hey, mate, you want to come back, or hey, I want to come back, and no, it was it it was. It was a long process because it was like we hung out that night and it was cool and like no, no work was brought up at all. Yeah. And then I think uh, the, the seed was planted and people started kind of just posing the question like, hey, uh, the guys got rid of uh, got rid of Dennis and they've got a tour booked. How would you feel about doing the tour? And I was like, I don't know. And then it was it was how do you feel about like making some music and we kind of we started slow and it was it was kind of a 
we walked into it with a let's just see how it goes like no pressure no strings like if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out if it works awesome and we got to the end of one tour and it was like okay yeah it's, yeah it's on well that that's a good segue because like asking alexandria and dwp have a tremendous history together um we do we we cite this particular show at rock on the range in may 2013 as a breakthrough for us and a breakthrough for you guys. If you recall, that was our first show together. I do remember. And you had a special guest on stage. Mr. Sebastian Back came out. Well I done. I remember. We and recorded that... um, our music video, Closure, uh, at that festival on that day. Yeah, so if we, if we, if we could go back to 2013, because um, at that time we were growing and we were a, a band like Asking Alexandria, um, and a day to remember and bring me the horizon. Those were really important bands for us because it helped us evolve and, and educate the rock fan in the States who just were, were supplying them with a lot of meat and potatoes. And to bring Sebastian Bach on stage really kind of collided the two worlds perfectly. Yeah. So if you could, uh, if you could kind of go into your memory bank and, and talk about that moment. That was a weird, that was a weird time for us, Alexandria. I think, there was a lot of interest in uh, us because we weren't, unlike a lot of other bands, we were like, well, we did the Skid Row covers and Danny had that voice of like an 80s rock singer, you know, that, that a lot of people couldn't do and, and weren't doing anymore. And so I think a lot of people from that era, you know, like Alice Cooper and Twisted Sister, Dee Snyder and all that, they, they like looked to us and were like, wow, this band's pretty cool. And when the, uh, the the Skid Row covers came out, I can't even remember how we got in. Uh, Sebastian, I think, got in touch with us. I don't even remember how it happened, but he was like, these are awesome. Yeah. I want to I wanna play them with you. And I think we ended up doing, before Rock on the Range, I think we did. Did we do the Golden Gods <clears throat> first, Danny? We did, with the go- we did the Golden Gods at... Um, at- I forget the name of it, but it's the, it's the theatre that's at the Staples. It was the Nokia yeah. Theatre, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we did. So we did it there, and we had we didn't have time for a full rehearsal, like a, a sound check. So we 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 kind of did like what the intro was going to be, but then Sebastian at the end he kind of decided, or no, we're going to do it this way. But we didn't have time to practice it. James wasn't even listening. Which so if you watch the video back, that's online. He like signals James, and James like it's just like oh. yeah. he's like yeah. what. <laughs> And so he does it again. And then like, we didn't really know what we were doing because we hadn't rehearsed it. We'd never sang this with the guy. Um, as soon as it started, right before I sing, I dropped the microphone. It rolls under the drum riser. So I have to stop, drop, roll under the drum riser, come back out with the microphone just in time to sing. Yeah. Terrible. That's awesome. But then it, then it started happening more and more. Like, obviously then we, we, we bought Sebastian for Rock on the Range and then People really enjoyed that. And then we had uh, Twisted Sister, D reached out to us and was like, yep. well, we want to do something with you. And we were in Europe and they were headlining, I cannot remember the name of the festival. It was, in, it was, in a, it was, it was the one in Belgium. I don't remember the name. Is it, it Grass, Grass Pop? Pop? Grass yeah, Pop. I think it's Grass and Pop. They, they were headlining it. And I remember they, they obviously they, they closed with I Want to Rock and they bought us out two drum kits, so James and their drummer, four guitar players, two vocalists, two bassists, and we closed out this festival in front of like 80,000 people. It was pissing it down with rain, uh, playing I Wanna, I Wanna Rock with, with Twisted Sister, and it just... I was, talk- I was talking about this the other day. You know what's heartbreaking about that? Hmm. There, are, there are no pictures or, uh, or videos of that anywhere. How's it possible? Because it never happened. Because it, cause it, <laughs> no, cause it was the end of the show, so there were no photographers in the pit. The festival weren't videoing. So there's like was a raining. couple fan videos, but it was torrential downpour, so no one had their phones up. Yeah. Wow, good one. So it's like that momentous like, a, like a, a event in our career. <laughs> there's, no docu- there's no documentation of it. Wow. Oh, well, I remember it like it was yeah. years ago. <laughs> well, uh, everybody, we are off stage with DWP. We have uh, good friends at DWP, Bruce and Danny of Asking Alexandria. Um, Want to keep on going down the, the chronological list, um, you know? And, and but I'll but I'll stop but I'll stop for a second and say this makes so much sense to me in talking to you guys. Why you're so different? Um, because you have, although you're not your typical kind of screamo hardcore band, you have Danny 
who really does like to sing mm -hmm. as That's a favorite thing. Right. But as a, but a, but an actual singer that uh, the, the, you, you come from Guns N' Roses and Skid Row and those bands mean a lot to you, which differentiates yourself from all these other bands. And that's why I think you had to, and correct me if I'm wrong, it felt like that's why Harlot, or We Are Harlot, you, it almost you had to get that out of your system a little bit. Um, yes and no. I think it's just, I, like, I wanted to do something that asking wasn't and isn't in a position to do. That was just like a like 70s rock song. It would be yeah. cool, but it would be so far left field for, like, or at least up until this point. Like it'd be so left field in terms of like the brand, people would just be super confused and not even know how to take it. If I if I did if asking least like eight piano ballads, it'd be like okay, what well, this uh, I don't know what's happening here. <laughs> so I like I've, I've I just I've lined myself up to where I just have these different outlets so that with asking we can focus on what this is and do do what we weird little urges to be like. You know, I really want to be Rod Stewart. <laughs> I can just make a Rod Stewart song and put it out, and then get back to asking Alexander and working on what we do. But it shows how, it, but that it shows how ask, asking has evolved too. Yeah. And I think if you guys didn't evolve, you would, you would probably go crazy as an artist and as. Would have been dead in that. Would have been dead in the water. Yeah, yeah. So that which leads me to like a house on fire. It's your 2020 release. You have a song that. 10 years ago, if I was to tell you, you would have a number one rock song in America on radio, it just, it, the stars have aligned in how you've evolved, especially with anti-socialist. Um, when you were making this record, was that in your mind? We're evolving. We're, we're becoming more rock and roll and less screamo. Or it's just, it's just something that... I think yes and been, no. I think it's been quite a natural thing, hasn't it, really, yeah. over, over the years. And, you know, I think it was always there. Um, if you go all the way back to Reckless and Relentless, the the rock and roll was there. And if you listen to From Death to Destiny, it was very much there. But we just hadn't honed in on our craft yet. We weren't confident enough in within ourselves as songwriters to just go fully in. You know, we were still learning. We were still evolving. And I think it's just led to this point, really, as we've grown and, and, and learned about each other and, our capabilities and, and who we are as people, I think it's just led us to this this moment. And we've been working hard. We've been working really hard at, at, at um, radio and rock uh, in the States for a long time now. It wasn't, like some bands I feel like they come in and they're like, boom, and it's, they've got this immediate success. Um, but for us, it's been, it's been a, s a slow build, which, makes it feel even more rewarding now that we're we're finally there you know it's like we've, we've worked really hard for this yes you have and, and we've seen it like for example i think um 2018 you guys did an entire black veil brides asking alexandria tour um and we at dwp booked you, you that tour that run on every festival we had um mm -hmm. and it was it was great because what you guys offer, like I said before earlier, is something different for us. Do you treat a DWP festival play in front of 40,000 the same as a headline gig or a co-headline with Black Veil? Or is it... Do you, I or, think we, yeah, we'd like to think that we treat it the same. But in, in reality, and, and, and looking at it from not being on the road for a minute, I think we treat it completely differently. And uh, I'm not saying this just because we're on with you guys. I think just we treat the uh, DWP festivals a little different anyway, because you guys were so instrumental in in our, our success and in our growth. So it's it's always a, a very big and important thing for us. I, I think I we go like, in. I feel like we have like a like a weird uh, personal attachment with uh, with you guys because it's like like Danny said, you've been pivotal in our career. Like we go back to the Rock and the Range, like you were saying, it was the first time uh, anyone in the radio world really took a took a gamble on asking Alexandria. And you know, the the European festivals they're already huge and established at this point. So I feel like everyone's always comparing uh, DWP festivals to to Europe. And we've been we I feel like we've been part of the growth with you guys. We've grown you know 
you were you were smaller then and we've watched you grow and we've grown with you so i feel like we have some kind of strange personal attachment so i you know danny's right i think we like to think oh no a show's a show but we do it's like there's an an extra level of excitement um when when festival season's around the corner we feel, we hey we feel the same way so like when you're looking at you're on a bus you're in whatever city in america and you're looking at your itinerary and and you know rockville or ladder than life you take notice that that means a lot to us too yeah yeah. Do you see a, a difference in an American festival crowd than, you know, than a download or a, you know, or something in Belgium or is it similar now to you? I think yeah, it's there's, a, there's, now, a, there's a culture. There's, there, there's, there is, a, there's, there's a, a cultural a difference, difference in how they move, but um, it's definitely gotten closer together. Yeah, right, I, 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 I find ahead. them to be super, super similar now. Obviously, different accents. But um, I think that, that, that there's something special about festivals, no matter where you are in the world, a rock festival, there's something magic about it. There's the people are excited. People have been waiting all year for, for, the, for that moment, you know, and that's obviously why it's such a bummer this year that it's gone because it is such a huge part of people's uh, years uh, um, each year. And, and I think you see that. I certainly feel it from stage. You know, you look out at the, at the crowd and, everyone there's the 40,000 people there and they're all friends they're all family for that for that those you know two three days and it's uh it's it's a magic feeling uh ben you're, now now you're making me sad and angry i know <laughs> i want to get out there man welcome um, to our world dude <laughs> yeah i mean i've we've all seen each other backstage and we've seen you on stage obviously and then and you guys do a good job of hanging around and you, you're doing press and you're seeing other bands um and, and, you know, maybe stealing a trick or two from them and probably vice versa. Do you, do you, do you view it like as some sort of boxing match as a competition at these festivals? Um, uh, no, we, we don't, we don't necessarily get, com well, we do a little bit com get competitive. If we, if we see someone and they do really, really well, um, we do kind of get back to the dressing room and say like, Hey, I just saw shine down and they do, you know, in this particular we're playing off the shine now. Before, so, yeah. <laughs> in, this in this particular dream. Or, <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 hey. You were talking about the European festivals. Yeah. 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 All good. So yeah, Shinedown's playing at three o'clock. Throw and go. Yeah. So it's like, hey, we just, you know, they, they killed it. Like, James, stop drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, well, hey, right, what yeah, was... We, we do Oh, go ahead. It's a little bit of comp competition, but it's more than anything, we're competitive with, our, with ourselves. Was there a show, Ben, that you saw as a kid that you said, okay, this, this is what I need to be doing here? Is it, was there a game changer moment for you? There was, there were, there were a lot. I saw so many shows, but I do particularly remember being front row um, for Machine Head in, in Dubai. And uh, the, I think it was Through Ashes of Empires had just come out. And I remember, the, I just remember the stage going dark and I just remember there's probably like 20,000, 10,000 people, whatever, behind me. And as soon as the stage goes down, you just feel the rumble of people behind you. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is the most exciting feeling I've ever felt course through my veins. And they came out, the lights came on, and they fucking, da -da, that big riff from Imperium came on. And I was like, holy crap. I want to be there. That's insane. Like, what these four dudes, five dudes are doing on stage, four dudes, yeah. is inciting madness behind me. And I just remember thinking that must be the coolest thing in the whole world. And I, th I think it was that where I was like, yeah, I, I got to do this. This is what I want. Danny, you got one? Yeah, uh, it, was, it, it was Bon Jovi on the It's My Life tour. See, Machine Head Bon Jovi. That makes so much sense, you guys. All this yeah. Alexandria starts like you like you're like okay I get I get how these guys what why these guys sound the way they do yeah well look you're you're you are the front man and and a Bon Jovi a Steven Tyler I mean those guys mm -hmm. are that's that's going to master class right yeah yeah Them and, yeah and we told you everything Jagger and Rod Stewart yeah yeah I've, I've seen Rod Stewart live and I've, I've seen so him so, ugh. It's, with the lone exception if if you catch this when when I saw him and I took the wife and he's like, "Thank you, you lucky people!" Like he kept on saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. He knows. I love he knows. That. 
That's amazing. Right, and you I'm guys, like, you're welcome. Rick, yeah. <laughs> I used to do that on stage. People didn't get the joke. <laughs> Not at all. Right. It was a little, you know, once in a while, but like after every song. Um, hey, we're with Asking Alexandria. We're, we're with Danny and Ben at, at Offstage with DWP. Um, is there anything you guys want to say to, to your fans out, out there during this downtime that we're all kind of stuck, locked in? I think um, just I, I would like to say thank you. I mean, we, we didn't know, much like anyone else, didn't know what this year was going to bring. You know, it's, it's obviously a struggle, not just for musicians and people in the music industry, but for everyone. You know, and I, I've noticed uh, our fans haven't gone anywhere. You know, if anything that we see our, our streams are going up, people are listening, people are excited, people are ready for, uh, for the shows to come back. And uh, we kind of, we're kind of hoping, we've had this talk with Dioni a bunch of times, we're kind of hoping our comeback to touring is, is around festival Dione's season. Manager. So, you know, he knows Dioni. I have to say, and, and- He does, but the listeners don't. Right, everybody <laughs> listening to Offstage, <laughs> Ask Me Alexandria has a great fucking team around him with Dione and your, your agency now mm -hmm. at CAA, you guys done a really good job of, of kind of, this is the evolution of your band and, and you guys work your ass off. I have to tell you, Jacoby of Papa Roach, who's a dear friend to everybody at DWP and everybody listening. When you guys were touring with P Roach, um, he took me aside and said, Hey, I have to tell you the dudes in asking Alexandra, cause you, you were playing him new music on that tour and he said they're yeah, on they're I'm on to something them. they're on to something and sure enough you guys delivered and it, it couldn't happen to more hardworking, nicer chaps that's amazing well it's good to know that you it like probably that could but so it much because, <laughs> yeah well we got we got we, i i've actually told dione and caa that if when we do come back if we're not main support on main stage for all Danny Wimmer uh, productions festivals, then they're all fired. Uh oh. So. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's a high bar, Ben. Come on now. <laughs> well, you listen. You, you you said how how helpful we were, and and you know, in helping grow the brand. And I mean, listen. It, you, you guys are welcome. We get it. We get it. Um, yes. You we lucky, accept lucky the offer. Bastards. You lucky people. We accept people. the offer. You lucky people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love you guys. Um, you know, be safe and, and good luck on your move to, to Charleston. Thank you. Um, there's a street there which uh, it's, if, has the best steak and seafood. Yeah. It, that's like anywhere, but it's right near the music farm. I'm so excited to go. I'm, I'm really, really, I've been no, doing nothing but watching YouTube videos and yelping restaurants for like the last four <laughs> weeks. So have I'm you ready. Done, have you done the Uber Eats search around your house yet? <laughs> no, dude, you know what's, you know what's fucking awesome is they, they don't really, it's, it's not like a fast food place. It's all like, there's like right. a million real restaurants. So yes. I'm excited to get very, very fat and sassy. And then 15 minutes away is, is a great beach. I'm, I'm forgetting the name, but yeah, hit the water. It's Folly Beach, I think. That's maybe. it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're just building our house. For it. Uh, yeah, I'm buying a boat and we're building our house right now, literally about four miles away from Folly Beach. Uh, I know where I'm going if I'm, if I'm in Charleston now. Ben's house. Yep. yep. Yeah. I'm stoked. Well, cheers, guys. Um, thank you for joining us thank offstage you. with DWP. And we'll see you at a show. Sooner than yes. later, right? Cannot wait. Cannot wait. Thank Peace. you.